Canine Farsi Chapter 2 Hot Dogs and Wild Geese Moving to America was both exciting and frightening, but we found great comfort in knowing that my father spoke English. Having spent several years regularing us with stories about his graduate years in America, he had left us with a distinct impression that America was his second home. My mother and I planned to stick close to him, letting him guide us through the exotic American landscapes that he knew so well. We counted on him not only to translate the language, but also to translate the culture, to build a link to his most foraging of lands. He was to be our own private Rosetta Stone. Once we reached America, we wondered whether perhaps my father had confused his life in America with someone else's. Judging from the beloved looks of Sorka Shears, gas station attendants and waitresses, my father spoke a version of English not yet shared with the rest of America. He attempted to find a water closet in a department store, would usually lead us to a drinking fountain or a home furnishing section. Asking my father to ask a waitress the definition of sloppy joe or tattered toes was no problem. His translations, however, were highly suspect. Waitresses would spend several minutes responding to my father's question, and these responses would turn in turn would be translated as she doesn't know. Thanks to my father's translations, we stayed away from hot dogs, catfish, and trash puppies, and no man of caviar in the sea would have convinced us to try mud pie. We wondered how my father had managed to spend several years attending school in America, yet remain so utterly befundedly by Americans. We soon discovered that his college years had been spent mainly in the library where he had managed to avoid contact with all Americans except his engineering professors. As long as the conversation was limited to vectors, surface tension, and fluid mechanics, my father was Fred sure was words. But one step outside the scintillating world of paterlomium, engineering and he had two left tongues my father's only regular contacts in college had been his roommate a pakistani who spent his day preparing to curry since neither spoke english but both liked curries they got along splendidly the person who had assigned them together had probably hoped that they would either learn english or learn a common language for the occasion Neither happened. My father's inability to understand spoken English was matched only by his effort to deny the problem. His constant at attempts at communication and communicating with America seemed at first noble and adventurous, then annoying. Somewhere between his thick Persian accent and his use of vocabulary found in pre World War II British textbooks. My father spoke a private language that nobody understood. Him hurt his pride. So what he lacked in speaking ability, he made up for by reading. He was the only person who actually read each and every document before he signed it. Buying a washing machine would, from Spear might take the average American 30 minutes. But by the time my father had finished reading the warranties, Terms of contract the, and credit information, the store was closing and the janitor was asking us to step aside so he could finish mopping the floor. My mother's approach to learning English consisted of daily lessons with Monty Hall and Bob Barker. Her invitation to Let's Make a Deal and The Price is Right were evident in her newfound ability to recite useless information. After a few months of television viewing, she could correctly tell us whether a coffee machine costs more or less than $19.99. How many boxes of hamburger helper, Savson's TV dinners, or turtle wax could one buy without spending a penny more than $20? She knew that too. Strolling down the grocery aisle, she joined in her celebrity sightings. Lipanti, 
Campbell's tomato soup, berry cockroach and creamy frosting. Every day she would tell us the, the day's wins and losses on game shows. He almost won the bar, the bar but his, the wife picked curtain number two and they ended up with a six foot chicken statue. The bad prices on Let's Make a Deal sounded more far more interesting than the good ones. Who would want a matching lazy boy recliners when they could have the adult subscribe and high chair set? My mother soon decided that the easiest way for her to communicate with Americans was to use me as an interpreter. My brother, Farshid, with his schedule full of soccer, wrestling, and karate, was too busy with recruiting for his dubious honor at an age when most parents are guiding their children towards independence my mother was hanging on to me for dear life i had to accompany her to the grocery store the hairdresser the doctor and every el place else that a child wouldn't want to go my reward was for doing that this was the constant praise of every american we encountered Hearing a seven-year-old translate Persian into English and vice versa made quite an impression on everyone. People lavished compliments on me. You must be very, very smart. A genius, maybe. I always responded by assuring them that if they ever moved to another country, they too would learn the language. What I want to say was that, that I wish I could be home watching the brandy, but instead of translating the qualities of various facial moisturizers. My mother had her own response to the comp compliments. Americans are easily impressed. I always encouraged my mother to learn English, but her talents lie elsewhere. Since she had never learned English in school, she had no idea of the grammar. She would speak entire paragraphs without using any verbs. She referred to everyone and everything as it, leaving the listener wondering whether she was talking about her husband or the kitchen table. Even if she didn't speak a sentence more or less correctly, her accent made it incomprehensible. W and TH gave her the most difficulty. As of God were playing a logistic joke in us, we lived in Viterer and shopped at Vitwood. Plaza, I attended Leffingwell School, and our neighbor was none other than Walter Williams. Despite the little progress on my mother's part, she, I continually encouraged her. Rather than teach her English vocabulary and grammar, I eventually decided to teach her entire sentences to repeat. I assumed that once she got used to speaking correctly, I could be removed, like, a tra like training wheels. And she would continue costing. I was wrong. Noticing some insects in our house, one day my mother asked me to call the examiner. I looked up the number, then told my mother to call and say, We have silver fish in our house. My mother grumbled, dialed the number, and said, Please come right away. Goldfish all over the house. The exterminator told her that he'd be over as soon as he found his fishing pole. A few weeks later, our washing machine broke. A repairman was summoned and the leaky pipe was quickly replaced. My mother wanted to know how to remove the black stain left by the leak. Y'all going to have to use some elbow grease, he said. I thanked him and paid him and walked with my mother to the hardware store. After searching fruitlessly for elbow grease, I asked the sales seeker for help. It removes stains, added. The manager was called. Once the manager finished laughing, he gave us the disappointing explanation. My mother and I walked home empty-handed. That I learned, later learned was what Americans called a wild goose chase. Now my parents have lived in America for 30 years. Their English has improved somewhat, but not as much as one would hope. 
It's not entirely their fault. English is a confusing language. Where my father paid his friend's daughter a compliment of calling her homely, he meant she would be a great housewife. When she complained about horny drivers, he was referring to the tendency of honks. And my parents still don't understand why ten- teenagers want to be cool so they can be hot. I no longer encourage my parents to learn English. I've given up. Instead, I'm grateful for the wave of immigration that has brought Iranian television, newspapers, and supermarkets to America. Now when my mother wants to ask Grocer whether he they, has any more eggplants in the bag that are a little darker and more firm because the ones he had out aren't right for Horshet's body man Jean. She can do it in Persian all by herself. And for that I say Alleluia, a word that needs no translation.